Y'all, what's up everybody? Once again, it's brand man, Sean. And we gotta talk about what you can learn from Metro Boomin's Not All Heroes Wear Capes album rollout strategy. Now, if you've seen my Metro videos lately, then you know that I talked about him using the pullout method. And for all of y'all folks that doubt it, just take a look at these billboards that dropped on October 26th. And because of the effects of the pullout strategy, when he was away from the game, it created an energy. So many people said, what happened to Metro Boomin? Where is he? Did he really retire? A lot of people kind of knew, but he was too young. He wasn't going to retire, but it created a lot of articles, videos, wondering where he is. He took that energy, played off of it, and then drop these billboards. And just to drive through how effective a pullout strategy can be when people actually care about where you are, let's look at the comments. Because Nav actually posted the billboards on his IG page and that post created a lot of chatter. People were saying stuff like, perfect timing too? Is there gonna be another one? What's happening to Metro? Is there gonna be a without warning too? And a lot of people actually wonder if Metro was really missing. For some reason, people believed it. People were putting up prayers for him and everything. And of course you had the few that knew that this was all album promo. So let's get into that part right here. Now this was a week long album sprint. October 26th was when the first billboards were posted in Atlanta and New York. And then six days later is actually when the project dropped on November 1st. And in that time, not only did you have Nav post on IG about the missing billboards, on October 30th, 21 Savage, Offset, and Metro Boomin all tweeted. 21 Savage said, 11.30, Offset said, don't trust you. And Metro Boomin just posted three jack-o'-lanterns. These kind of cryptic posts are elusive. They keep fans guessing, trying to figure out what the puzzle really is that's coming together. But at this point with the billboards and 21 Savage, Offset, Metro Boomin, and Nav all posting in this short period of time, it's pretty clear that something's coming. And the next day on Halloween, Metro Boomin post his album cover art on IG. The caption read, not all heroes wear capes, Drop some flames if you're ready. Of course, all kind of people just dropping flame, 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 flame all throughout the page. But you get the point. Folks were ready for whatever was coming. At this point, you got a lot of people who are just excited to see Metro back in the spotlight. And then on November 1st, Metro Boomin drops the track list for Not All Heroes Wear Capes. Now, it's not completely clear to a lot of people at the time that Not All Heroes Wear Capes was the actual title because so many people were still guessing was it going to be perfect timing too without warning too but he continues this theme at the top of the track list posting where he says 10 a.m save the world he's coming back to save y'all folks his caption read tonight we eat so he lets you know that it's coming tonight and of course he says drop some flames if you're ready once again flames ensue flame 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 all throughout the post but the album drops now let's bring it back. What exactly can you learn from Metro Boomin's rollout of Not All Heroes Wear Capes? Well, there's three main factors. First and foremost is the fact that I actually do not believe he necessarily said, I'm gonna retire, did that whole thing, and planned to do this as an album release. He stepped back for whatever reasons he stepped back, minding his own business. But at some point he probably realized that, hey, there's this whole thing about me not being there, what's happening to Metro. And he used that energy that's in the marketplace to amplify his message, played off of it to keep things rolling. And that's a strong lesson I can't reiterate enough. Whatever you do, you don't necessarily know how the market's gonna react, what people are going to perceive what you're doing as, but if you can figure out a way how to positively spend that for your own benefit, then you're gonna be able to figure out how to market more effectively again and again because you'll just be accelerating narratives and spinning narratives that already exist versus trying to create a narrative and that takes a whole lot of effort that might not necessarily be worth the money. And in a day and age where you can really almost quantify so much of the conversation that you can keep a pulse on through social media, it's very easy to see what the energy is out there. And you don't necessarily have to use energy that's about you. You can use energy that's about another subject, another topic or another you know, celebrity or whoever the person is and take that and figure out a way how to insert yourself into that conversation to bring attention back to your project. Number two, this was a six day album rollout strategy. That is a very short sprint when you consider that sometimes, especially back in the day, people might do a whole month long or two, three weeks worth of album rollout. As a matter of fact, people still do that to this day. But in this day and age, once again, there's so much information that people are taking in within a short period of time. It's hard and expensive to monopolize a lot of people's attention for a long period of time. 
So the fact that they were able to create the momentum pretty quickly and then go ahead and drop it while it was still accelerating and the tension was still coming in their direction, it was highly beneficial because not only does it cost money to continue to get back in front of people and to continue to push the hype a lot of times, but you also just never know what else is gonna happen in the marketplace. You know, something wild might happen in the real world news or Kanye might be doing something or some other artist that you had no idea what they were gonna do is about to do something real wild and decide to drop the same day that you dropped. There's so many factors when you try to hold people's attention and do these long drops. It can be risky. Let's just put it that way. And if you could apply that to someone at the level of Metro Boomin, you could definitely apply the same thing to a smaller artist. You might want to just go ahead and drop some things in a rather quick cadence so then you can go ahead and get the project out and then everybody else, they just have to catch up. And then as you get bigger, more people will get that. And number three, when it comes to that, it also goes back to resources. If you don't have a lot of money, if you don't have a lot of different people that you can use again and again to continuously get back in front of people, then it's to your advantage not to elongate your album rollout and just get the project out there or get the single out there or the EP and mixtape, whatever words you want to use, show people the content. And it doesn't hurt that the project is dope. I haven't got a chance to listen to it again and again and again yet, but the 10 Freaky Girls followed up by Up To Something, followed up by the interlude with Travis Scott. That's my favorite back to back to back so far. I'm sure others will grow with me, but I haven't got a chance to listen to it all yet. Anyway, as always, I wanna know what you guys think. What did you guys think about the whole album drop strategy? What do you think about him using the pullout strategy and how he actually played on the missing? What are you possibly going to do when you drop your album next? Want to know all your thoughts. But other than that, if you like this, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.